Preparing to delve in three, two, one. You know, you roll the ball around and you get bigger balls. Maybe that's not how I want to phrase it. Anyway, the point I is... I think you should clip that and put it at the front okay. of the episode. Yeah, that's the front of the episode. Okay, great. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh, Alex, uh, I have a special topic that I wanted to talk to you about today. What is that special topic, Nathan? <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is actually something that we've brought up on the show once or twice. You might have remembered that uh, a few times on the show, you had made mention about how you can't copyright game mechanics. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm now suddenly concerned someone tried and won a court case. So, you're not going to be happy about this. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> um, it's not exactly that, but I, I figured that this would be the kind of thing that you'd be concerned about. Recently, a little bit earlier in the month, and I am talking a little bit about video games, but I am a little concerned that it might happen for Tabletop as well. Warner Brothers Games... Uh, actually successfully secured a U.S. patent for the Nemesis system from uh, Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. Uh, oh, that's the one where the orcs would mm -hmm. remember everything you did and gain power and levels and all the actions you take around and would do that. Yeah, yeah. If, if one of the little minions of the orc army were to kill you, they then also rise up in the ranks, they get their own name and, like, a, a title and everything, and then they are marked, and there's bigger rewards to that, and essentially the idea of taking the NPCs that you are fighting and uh, creating a whole algorithmic system underneath it uh, for, the, for the player character to interact with. But uh, isn't that just a... then a list of dependencies in the program it goes if this then that then this you're not wrong um since it is a patent and we're not talking necessarily about copyright uh it does work a little bit to, I, I guess where where can i actually start here should we we talked a little bit about what the nemesis system essentially is in that yeah and it's essentially it's, an ai yeah it, uh, it's a it's, it's a program that basically determines ai actions in the game and the right. hierarchies like i i have shadow of uh mordor and yes. it's like if you set this guy on fire he's gonna be really angry and retreat because he hates fire so it's a list of traits or things that can happen conditions tr uh triggers met uh, and outcome. They have a little bit uh, of more of the abstract of what the actual patent uh, does, but they're talking about like methods for managing non-player characters and power centers in a computer game based on character hierarchies and individualized correspondences between character traits or ranks and events. Um, this is actually something that has, since Shadows of Mordor, been used in other games. As you are probably aware, the one that uh, immediately pops out to mind is they use this in like Jedi Fallen Order uh, and in like Assassin's Creed Odyssey because those are mercenaries and it's it's you know randomized mercenaries that keep increasing with difficulty. Uh, they did uh, something a little similar to like Watch Dogs Legion because all of the NPCs are able to be used, uh, utilized in different ways. But but that kind of idea has been utilized in other ways. It is indeed a patent. We're not talking about copyright. Why don't we just, just for, for clarity, let me just explain a real basic difference between copyrights, patents, and trademarks. Okay, yeah. No, I was, I was going to ask if we could do that because I want yeah. to be clear here. Yeah. So here is the description that I was able to pull up. Copyright is an automatic right which protects original literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic works. A patent is a registered right that gives the owner exclusive right to features and processes of inventions. And a trademark protects logos and signs that are used in relation 
to a particular type of product or service. Right. So, essentially, your copyright is your intellectual property. Patents can be things that you want to register as individual features, and then trademarks would be like if you want to put up your logos and your signs and all of that stuff that is related to it. Right. So. And say the Nemesis system, I'm sure they can trademark that once it's patented as its own thing. Mm. I think that you can do that. Do not quote me. I assume since it is now its own feature, its own thing with its own name, mm -hmm. you could then trademark it. If you want to trademark essentially the nemesis, if you want to put that on it, that it is the nemesis system partic you know, in particular, that might be a trademarkable uh, right. thing. Right. It's, it's like the D20 systems. Right. Is a trademark. It is, this is what this thing is, but it's not patented. Uh, that's a lot harder because that would be under copyright instead. Yes. But this one is uh, really interesting because I know, like, you can patent physical objects, obviously, like uh, a microchip, I probably, I don't know. Like, the Wright brothers patented the airplane or mm -hmm. their version of the airplane, mm. you know, and anyone who built it, anything similar to it, you know, uh, I, I believe there is fees. And stuff when you use a patent, um, you have to pay XYZ for use of that product or feature. I can I can help you out a little bit more too with, with patents here because sure. I, I was pulling up a little bit of other important information. So there this is this is interesting to note. There are actually three different kinds of patents that you can have. <laughs> okay. So you can have a utility patent, a plant patent. And a design patent. Now, I'm pretty sure plant patent does not mean Seymour. Like, I was going like to ask if that was, like, <laughs> plants, plants, or, like... <laughs> okay, so so I guess I'll start there. So the plant patent protects new and unique plants' key characteristics from being copied, sold, or used by others. So that uh, they're, they're talking about, actually, like, industrial plants. Okay. That's, a, that's a little different. Okay, we're not talking house plants <laughs> can't get patented. You, you're fine. Your Venus flytrap that eats. I'm people. gonna get a Venus flytrap now, though, and I'm gonna oh. name it Pat. Okay, <laughs> that's that's perfectly fine. I think that I think that is legally. Uh, Actually, I'm gonna name it patent pending. <laughs> patent pending. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so that you, you have a design patent, uh, or, or uh, sorry, you have a utility patent. Let's start there. That covers creation of a new or approved product process or machine okay those are those are probably what you're thinking about the physical products that's uh, it, it's uh, also known as a patent for innovation which would bar other individuals or companies from making using or selling the creation without consent the other one is the design patent uh, which applies to the unique look of a manufactured item like if an automobile, the example they give here on Investopedia, thank you, uh, an automobile with a distinctive hood or headlight shape, those elements would be part of its identity, may add to its value, and if you have not patented them without protecting those components, competitors could copy them without legal consequence. Right. Uh, and utility patents, too, just other little thing to note is that they they would require the holder to pay regularly scheduled maintenance fees right if yeah and they're usually good for like up to 20 years so that's a little bit of an overview of the patent so i i don't necessarily know if it's the design uh, that they're talking about I, I have a feeling that this is more about the, the actual utility of it because it's it's about the mechanics behind the scenes of of how it works the actual process of it but yeah, it would it would mean that there's uh, there's probably some fees attached to it if other companies besides WB wanted to utilize it inside of games, um, and this is right now just something that's being utilized inside of video games. But as you can probably imagine, there's quite a few people that see this as being a problem. <laughs> oh yeah, I can imagine. Let me see. WB's patent on the Nemesis system, you, uh, I don't want to read the patent number, is listed as Nemesis characters, Nemesis forts, social vendettas, and followers in computer games. Notably, WB has been trying to get this patent approved since March of 2015, shortly after mm -hmm. the initial September 2014, the middle of Earth Shadow Mordor. 
U.S. Patent and Trademark Office released a notice on February 3rd that states the patent will go into effect on February 23rd and could remain into effect until 2035. Which makes sense because that would be what? That would be 20 years past when they initially filed. Yeah. In 2015. But yeah. But that means anyone who's used it before. I guess they're okay because it hasn't been taken. Hmm. Well, I mean, it wasn't in place when they used it. So I think, I don't think that they have anything to worry about. But if if you had stuff that was in the works that hasn't technically been released yet, does not necessarily mean that they can claim copyright infringement. But if you're talking, you know, talking about like infringement on a patent, that gives you some legal precedent there. Again, we're not lawyers, but this is just the way we understand it. Okay, uh, so I, I am reading a little bit as as we talk. I kind of figured this might concern you. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious now. So from yeah. um, what's creating the controversy with WB Games, patent on Nemesis system isn't simply the establishment of a patent then, but from two separate sources. One comes from how broad the patent's language is, which would allow WB to charge competitors for licensing or simply take them to court when they attempt to implement anything even vaguely similar to the individual elements of the Nemesis system. Mm. Um, which could, as you said, involve Watch Dogs Legion. Um, yeah, potentially. Or Assassin's or, Creed Odyssey. It, or, or future Assassin's Creed games, because I know that they're trying to... They, they have a tendency to reuse a lot of those mechanics in future right. installments. So, yeah. um, says the other points that's been raised comes from the iterative nature of game design. Video games, by their nature, aren't made in a vacuum like any other creative process. The game developers will take systems that were effective or at least popular from previous releases and improve on them for their final product. Every new game is inspired, often visibly, by features and mechanics from the other games that came before it. So, like, I, I guess I get it from WB's side, obviously. Mm. It makes sense that they want to protect the, the thing they made, but it, it, it is definitely not constructive for the field of game design. No, because... Like it was pointed out, I, I originally heard about this actually on Jimquisition, and what uh, Jim had made mention of is that the iterative nature of mechanics is how you get better products. If, right. If you're not allowed to iterate on something, you might remember back in the 90s. Okay. Ah, uh, vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, back in the 90s. Um, you might have seen a few games that were probably from Namco that had the games on the loading screen. You know, they had the oh, little, yeah. little... Yeah, they had the little... I feel game. like you well, remember this story, but go ahead. So, the thing about it is that Namco was like, we want to patent what they refer to as auxiliary games. Something that people can enjoy while the game is loading. And so they, they did that in, like, I think it was 98... That patent expired in 2015. Is that why we have uh, the Google loading screen with the games and stuff? Uh, the Google page not found dinosaur game and the uh, the uh, snake game? I suppose that is, because after 2015, that got, you know, lifted. But in the meantime, you might have noticed that a lot of big games didn't even bother to come back to it because it hasn't been innovated for the last, like, t practically 20 years. Right. So most people didn't even bother because it just falls by the wayside. And I, I don't think even Namco ended up continuing to use it because they don't produce much anymore. <laughs> um, sorry, but it's it's true. N name the Namco games that came out last year. Um, no, I'm good. <laughs> and then, then the other one that uh, when I was reading this on, on the GeekWire article, actually, they brought up was uh, Katamari Damacy. Yeah, I think I was probably just reading the same article you were. Yeah, yeah, the central mechanic of which is, you know, you roll the ball around and you get bigger balls. Maybe that's not how I want to phrase it. Anyway, the point I is... I think you should clip that and put it at the front okay. of the episode. Yeah, that's the front of the episode. Okay, great. It It's actually, that whole mechanic is protected till 2026, and like they make note, it's probably the reason you haven't seen a lot of Katamari likes. <laughs> Because uh, um, imagine if they tried to do something like this, and they tried to patent like the um, a Souls like as a genre. Yeah. Well, or imagine if Minecraft had patented. That, oh. You know the yeah. what the formula that Minecraft has, like the crafting and the uh, like. I don't the think design? you could do it visually, but like 
yeah. building and design aspect. Out, out, you, well, you could you could put something out there that's like um, the, the design and building in cube forms or something like that. You might be yeah. able to cuboid to, form building and crafting. Cuboid um, form building. Yeah. Imagine on the tabletop side though. What if like D and D twenty years yep. ago, thirty years ago, had patented the leveling system? It, we we would practically be looking at a dead RPG genre. In, we we'd have very different RPGs than what we have now, if at all. And a lot less of them. I can see a lot less of them as well. Well, yeah, they would absolutely crush any hopes for any indie games at all. If you didn't have experience, if you didn't have the money, but if you just if you didn't have like experience as a mechanic that you could utilize without paying for for the patent to like wizards, what what are what are you gonna do? How else are you going to do that? Like, we've talked on this show about other options that you might want to pursue, but for a lot of people, they would have they would just been like, I don't know. I'm out. I don't know what other thing I would be able to use or how different I could make it so that I wasn't violating patent. And luckily, that didn't happen because I'm pretty sure that if you if you like the scope of, like, the tabletop RPG market right now, you're very glad they didn't do that because yeah. it would have been a lot smaller and a lot um, more niche. I feel for most of those uh, those smaller game companies that were coming up, it would create very small markets for them. This was what I was uh, kicking around in my head when I had heard about this earlier in the month, and I figured that you might have some some general thoughts on it, considering your previous statements on uh, how great it is that we can't copyright game mechanics but apparently there is a lot of precedent that you can at least patent them <laughs> i don't know if you could get away with this in tabletop space or not Hope hopefully we don't give anyone ideas but <laughs> <laughs> if you're go if you're planning on going ahead and patenting tabletop mechanics like that systems like that please jump out some window somewhere on the ground floor and realize we are not we are not encouraging it, and we do not support you in this endeavor. <laughs> it's um, a general rule of thumb. But, uh, yeah, no, that's... They haven't... When's, when did Shadow of War come out? Oh, Shadow of War, I believe, came out in 2015. So they, they haven't made another game that uses the Nemesis system by them? In, uh, yeah, Shadow of War. In six years? I'm trying to think what other things WB might have made that used the Nemesis oh, I didn't know system. they... I didn't know it was WB games. I didn't know WB had games. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, maybe I can find some more recent ones that used those mechanics. The thing I'm mostly familiar with is I believe that they had Rocksteady under their banner because they were doing, like, the um, Arkham games. Sure. Yeah, and all the Lego... Oh, okay. The Traveler's Tales is is their is their thing. Lego. And yeah. Oh, Techland. Oh, that's right. So Dying Light and and those those are ones that are still under Warner Brothers Interactive. Um I'm trying to just see if there's anything that they have listed here that has utilized similar stuff to Shadow of Mordor. Cause... I assume no, cuz you would have heard about it. It would have been great cuz that system is really good. It's a really great system. Um, th I mean, there have been other companies that used stuff that was similar. I yeah. I do know that, but not necessarily WB themselves. They used it for that particular brand. But like, as I'm just looking down the thing, oh, like Hitman IO Interactive is actually under them too. But you notice that they didn't actually use it for like the Hitman. Like that, well, no, that. you're just straight up murdering people that don't come back to life for that. Yeah, yeah no, there is no nemesis system there. It's not like if if Agent Forty Seven dies in that in that series that he comes back later and and has to put out a hit on the next. The see, next person. I could I could almost see like if EA had done something like that, they would use it for like The Sims. Oh yeah, they would have used it for The Sims. They would, but I interestingly enough though, since we're talking about EA. One of the games that I'm thinking about that used a similar mechanic is Jedi Fallen Order. That would have been under EA. Um, and they they did have a system like that that, well, they used some Dark Souls stuff in there too. But the idea of mercenaries that come in and, 
and everything like that and are essentially your your nemeses that you have to deal with um they used something similar to that uh but now if they were to if they came back and they said yeah we're going to be doing like fallen order 2 and they wanted to use something similar to that i'm pretty sure that there's going to be something that warner brothers is going to say now yeah uh because now we're not going to see unless it's by them or someone's gotten the money to license it if they're even willing to let people license it, we're not going to see anything that has that kind of gameplay or that system in place where you defeat someone or they defeat you and you come back. Considering that it was probably the most interesting mechanic, I can understand that they are they want to have some kind of an identity for it, but it's also kind of a terrible move. It's a move dick to move. To, it's a dick move, let's face it. It's a dick move. Little, little dick uh, to. <laughs> <laughs> very a very small amount um uh that that you can't use it for for other things or that you're going to essentially like try to hold a hostage i don't think that yeah. that's necessarily like i get a, a good way protecting your ip i get protecting your copyright but when you've done something like that in the field of game design and it's something people love it and for that it's sort of like i think people have a tendency to forget how they got there to be to be fair about stuff like like we often talk about like we've talked about it in the past about uh disney continuing to I- expand like licensing their, their copyright agreements so that they can keep essentially mickey under public domain becoming public domain yeah without becoming public domain but it's one of those things where they apparently forgot that most of their library and most of what they've done is iterating on something that was a previous work. Right. Or remaking a previous work. Most of their animated movies were literally just stories that were already told by a writer beforehand that they then took and made something else out of. Right. And and then they wanted to lock it behind doors so nobody else can do it. So... It feels like it's sort of that kind of energy that's being put into stuff like this. And it did worry me because I started thinking about that. Like when we talked about like a D20 system, like our our natural assumption there was, uh, yeah, no, no reason to worry about it because you can't copyright the game mechanic. But could someone patent the use of a 20 sided polyhedral? As as a methodology to determine success or failure in a uh, tabletop RPG, and would that mean that somebody had to pay a license for it if they decided to use that particular die? The thing there is that if they did, there's so many options for people just to go, all right, we're not going to use it. We have other options. Like, you're going to be the only ones using it? And and let if people might not like it, and they might stop buying your product because they don't like that move you made, or they might take you your product and just you know strip everything aside from that. And and the thing that I always find fascinating is when people try to do these moves, and you can automatically see how it is going to hurt them in the future. And the way I see this is one: people might not just want to buy the product because they think that it was uh, again. A dick move. Like we're just gonna we're just gonna say it. But also consider this. Like let's go back to Katamari Damasi for a second. Yeah, you haven't seen a lot of Katamari likes, but you know what you also haven't seen? A lot of Katamari Damasi games. Yeah. I I don't think I've seen any in the last five to ten years, and it's probably because there's no one else that's even keeping it alive. It would have to be the company themselves, and if if there's no demand for the specific thing that they're doing, then that kind of goes by the wayside too. And like we had mentioned earlier about the load screen games, they practically don't exist anymore and hadn't even while the patents were there. So you've, you've essentially put the barrier of entry high enough that nobody innovates on it and therefore it just becomes a dead mechanic. Yeah. You, you put this barrier to entry for this thing that you made, and then you're also not going to use it. Right. So right. you're just gatekeeping yourself and everybody else from having yeah. fun at that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, it's um, kind of like, oh, we built a wall around this kitchen. Oopsies. <laughs> we built it from the outside, and there's no door to get in. We're stuck out here, too. 
we can't get into the kitchen now, so what are we supposed to do? Yeah, it's Seems like when like you accidentally one. wall your sims into a one-by-one one room. Yeah, no one would try to do that. You Nobody put them in the would. pool and you take the ladder away. <laughs> Nobody does that. No one at all. Um, but yeah, I, I, I worry about that because I'm also looking at WB's other things like Dying Light. I like Dying Light a lot and that's, that's under, under their banner. What if they decided to try and do something with, with that? Like if they said like the light dark mechanics, the, um, the night and day mechanics where the game practically changes on its head depending on the time of day. Um, you, could, you could theoretically do that too. Uh, any of these kinds of mechanics for different series. But the thing is, is that you know what's going to happen is very much like those other cases we were talking about. Those are going to end up being dead mechanics. If we go back to tabletop for a second and you say, maybe Dungeons and Dragons could have patented some of their mechanics, uh, not only would it have eliminated a lot of other RPGs that came up afterward, but I don't think D&D would be as big as it is now. And I mean, that's, again, that's all postulating, but I, I don't see it encouraging uh, people to get into tabletop gaming when you've now limited the space so much. Yeah. And because of that, I don't think you would see the, the resurgence or the staying power of D&D in general because there's nothing out there in their sphere. So they've limited their sphere for tabletop RPGs in general. When you limit the supply to one... There's there's no longer a demand for it. Right. Because yeah. there's nothing else to show them how good this is. It's like, oh, only one of these things exist. Right. It must not be very good. Because yeah. nobody's imitating it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like to to give you a perspective for somebody who doesn't understand anything about... it. it may, maybe you don't know a lot about gaming or game design, but imagine this. I'll try to give you an example Go to a supermarket. Okay. Now imagine that uh, somebody puts a patent on your apples. I have patented the apples. Nobody else can distribute <laughs> apples. Now you have one kind of apple. There's nothing else there. There's no variety. There's no choices there. And how much is it going to be that you, how, how many apples do you think you're going to be seeing now? Like, <laughs> people are going to start buying other kinds of fruit. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. You, you you can love your Macintosh as much as anybody, but I got bad news for you. If you don't have, like, the Galas and the Red Deliciouses and now I just want apples, the point is, <laughs> if you don't have those, people aren't really going to spend as much time even thinking about apples, or if they want to use them, they'll be probably looking at other options. And, and, and that, they'll also yeah. make different pies. They'll make different pies. I don't have to make an apple pie. I could make a pecan pie. Or, ooh, that sounds great, actually. Welcome to Alex's food blog, uh, blogcast. The blogcast? <laughs> yeah, let's do the blogcast. Um, so, so, yeah, that was a piece of news that had just come up, and I, I figured that you'd like to, one, be informed that that did indeed happen, and, uh, that, and that also you'd want to you'd weigh in on that a little bit more. Wow. That was oh man did not I didn't uh didn't pay attention didn't notice that that was that was that was that something yeah so on yeah. the flip side too imagine that the first person who did podcasting uh patented that oh wow yeah that would be something can you like <laughs> oh um storytelling or narrative in an audio format using a microphone and recording device mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to tell news or stories or well, discussions. What if I what if I told you though, Alex? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to tell you something else that's probably going to to also make you a little afraid. That there was somebody who tried to do that. <laughs> and I am assuming they failed? <laughs> they did. They did. Um but this is this is something I do remember this, and I I pulled it up because I wanted to remember uh, what it was. This this reminded me of something really weird. But basically, uh, it it was a patent troll. <laughs> um, but it was personal audio LLC. Um, this was back in 2013, 
and they started suing people because they claimed that they actually had <clears throat> a system for disseminating media content in serialized episodes. They had filed a patent that basically said that they own podcasting is essentially what happened. But that they, would be like someone lost. saying that they could patent the news. <laughs> and as you can imagine, this this probably would have never been able to really move forward. Like, what eventually happened is is the Electronic Frontier Foundation actually took up the case and they won. <laughs> and, and the Supreme Court actually rejected that. Um, oh, good. At least they're useful so, for some. <laughs> there was a there was a safe podcasting campaign that was part of this. A lot of podcasters came out and and basically set up defense funds in order for that to 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 happen. They all kind of got together. They talked about it and they were like, "Yeah, this is this is ridiculous." And you know that the real thing that they wanted to do was to try and get a lot of money from people, yeah. so that they could continue to podcast. And some people might have taken them up on that, but ultimately that is what failed. But it does not mean that they did not try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have tried. So anyway, and that's why podcasting is so prevalent. They're almost actually... Another fun thing that I learned uh, today is that uh, we are... Uh, we, we had just... I believe we just surpassed like a million podcasts. Yep. So I heard that. So there's something. Yep. So there's, so there's wow. that. Congratulations on not having podcasting patented. Because I don't think we would have gotten there if that if that had happened. You know what that means, right? What does it mean? Great time for you all listening to make your own new podcast. It is a great time for you to make your own There's podcast. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Let's add more. That's right. Plenty of fish in the sea. But let's face it. You could be a marlin. You'll be a big fish. There's there there's some small fish, but if you if you work hard, you might become a big fish. One day we're hoping to be. You can drown in fish. You could drown in fish. You can drown in podcasts. You could drown in podcasts. Can you imagine if there was like a deadliest catch, but for podcasts? It'd be a deadliest cast. Perfect. Deadliest cast coming soon. Please make that happen. If it isn't already a thing, it probably already is. Man, that's too good. That's too good. Um, so yes, anyway. So since podcasting is not currently patented, and we are still able to produce episodes, you might be interested to know that we've done quite a few of them. And uh, Alex, if anybody wanted to hear any of those podcasts, where could they go on the internet? To the ocean! No, you can't go to the ocean. Don't <laughs> listen to us in the that's ocean. That's bad cast. form. You can go to delvcast.com. Yes, and there you can find all of the episodes of this show and many, many more, as well as articles and videos. And you can click on our Patreon banner. Uh, we try to release some uh, fuller episodes with some additional content on there uh, on a regular basis and usually ahead of schedule. So worth uh, checking that out. Thank you to our Shiny Little patrons, Nick and Bonnie Ainsworth, and of course to Drunk Paul, who helps us over on our Discord. We're a level one Discord, thanks to him. Um, and, uh, besides that, you can also find us on social media. We do exist there. You might not know, but I am Citanium. I am at EXP Unlimited, and the show is at Dell Podcast. Yes, so please check on over to there. It is the Twitter. It's this newfangled thing. I think it's going to catch on. The Twitter. If you go on any of the podcast apps, too, you can actually subscribe to us over on Apple Podcasts, on Google Play. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us basically everywhere podcasts are sold or distributed. Not really sold. The price tag is zero. So really, what are you waiting for? <laughs> um, enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, so at any rate, since we have not been patented yet, I think we're free to say whatever we want at this point. Um, oh. That's how that probably, works. I don't think that's how it works, come to think of it. I guess if we were patented, other people couldn't say they were us. See, see, I'm wondering, I'm just wondering now. Uh, Ooh, this is scary. For, for B-roll, for, you yeah. know, after the episode audio, if people are still listening. Yeah. Um, if something you enjoyed playing or used, like, for some of our game design friends... Uh, what if that mechanic that you were trying to use to make your game was patented and you couldn't use it? How would you 
change that system. So if you, if any of y'all are listening and heard that, uh, get at us in the Discord or on Twitter. The other thing you can do, too, is uh, you can leave comments right on the episode post, too. Yeah, but no one does that, Nathan. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it easy for him. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, yeah, you can hit us up on Discord. Uh, you can, and uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of follow-up on the next episode, too, if anyone uh, talks to us. So, yeah, how would you change your, your patent-pending <laughs> mechanics if somebody else beat you to the punch? I'm wondering. That's a good follow-up episode, actually. But we're not going to do that right now. Nobody's answered us yet. No one has answered us yet, so we can't do that episode yet. We're going to do the follow-up, and we're just going to go, up. Oh, nobody answered us. Sorry, this is a very short episode. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We will talk to you on the next one. Goodbye for now. Bye.